This is the first time humans have landed on Mars. Astronauts intended to bring Martian soil samples back to Earth for study, unaware that a terrifying alien creature was hidden within, just as they initiated the spaceship to return home. A horrifying event occurred. The container storing the samples was suddenly opened, and the soil inside turned into a disgusting slime that oozed out and slowly approached the unsuspecting astronaut. In the final moment before the spaceship's takeoff, the black slime suddenly attacked them, followed by a brief loss of contact with Earth. When they slowly opened their eyes, it seemed as if nothing had happened. After reporting to headquarters that all was normal, they immediately piloted the spaceship back to Earth. Little did they know, a terrible disaster was about to befall Earth. In fact, this was not humanity's first encounter with this alien species. As early as 1974, scientists used the alien's DNA combined with human genes to create a new life form named Sil. However, Due to Sil's astonishingly rapid evolution and otherworldly reproductive capabilities, and its constant desire to mate with humans, the research facility ultimately destroyed Sil for Earth's safety. Despite this, the military remained uneasy, fearing the return of this terrifying alien creature. Thus, under the leadership of Dr. Laura, the military used Sil's genes to create a more docile clone named Eve in search of a way to combat the alien creature, but no matter how Laura tried to harm Eve, it was all in vain. Moreover, the alien creature's adaptability was abnormal. Any attack would immediately trigger the evolution of corresponding antibodies. The military was at a loss. Eve, the clone, possessed a hint of humanity unlike her original form, and over time, Laura and Eve developed an emotional bond. The intelligent Eve knew she was their lab rat and began expressing her dissatisfaction to Laura. Despite her reluctance, Laura had to obey her superior's orders due to her duty. Soon, the three astronauts safely arrived back on Earth. Dr. Orensky was the first to conduct a medical examination on them. Initial checks showed no abnormalities in their health. However, for safety reasons, they were required to undergo more detailed blood tests. Therefore, they were prohibited from having intimate contact with the opposite sex until the results were available. Patrick, however, did not heed the advice. Having not been in contact with a woman for months, he immediately got intimately close with a pair of twins after the celebration. Unexpectedly soon after the end of the twins' belly is high, the stomach of the alien species soon burst out. The twins have died horribly on the spot. In just a few hours, the alien species had grown to the appearance of a few years old, and they were taken to a secluded farm by Patrick. Meanwhile, within the research facility, Eve seemed to feel the presence of her kind, which intensely triggered her desire to reproduce. At the same time, Orensky discovered something amiss while observing Patrick's blood under a microscope. He saw an unknown active cell rapidly devouring Patrick's cells. Unexpectedly, the container filled with blood was suddenly knocked over, and the spilled blood, seemingly conscious, instantly flowed towards the corner of the room. Curious, Orensky immediately followed to investigate. Unaware that the blood had mutated, a tentacle suddenly burst through the wall. And Orensky died on the spot without time to react. This incident quickly alarmed the military. Upon investigating the scene, they discovered that the DNA from Orensky's wounds was identical to the alien genes found on Eve. However, since Eve had never left the laboratory, they concluded that there must be other aliens, and the three astronauts who had just returned from Mars were undoubtedly the most likely to be parasitized by alien DNA. Therefore, to uncover the truth, Colonel Burgess, who was in charge of the incident, specifically called an agent press, who was on vacation, but as soon as they entered the laboratory, Laura drove them out because Eve would develop a desire to reproduce upon contact with males. After understanding the situation, Press immediately led a team to start investigating, beginning with the astronauts. Unbeknownst to them, at that moment, the female astronaut and could no longer resist her loneliness and became intimate with her husband. Just as Press and his team arrived downstairs, the alien species inside and's belly had already mutated and extended tentacles to grab the man. Press and Laura arrived just in time to witness the scene. Press quickly shot and severed the alien's tentacles, while Laura used poison gas to kill the alien entity but it didn't save their lives. On the other side, Campbell also broke the rules and secretly brought a woman onto a yacht, hoping to spend a wonderful night. Fortunately, a team of agents arrived in time to stop Campbell's next move. The previously impassioned Gamble was instantly weakened and, with a confused face, was taken to the laboratory. While explaining the situation to Gamble, they took his blood for testing, but strangely, Gamble's blood was normal, 
and no alien DNA was detected. At this point, Patrick was the only one missing. At that moment, Patrick was staying at his girlfriend Melissa's house. Having experienced the previous events, he felt something was wrong with his body. Facing Melissa's warmth, Patrick initially resisted but eventually gave in, as expected. The next day when he woke up, Melissa's belly had burst open, and there was an additional child next to her. Patrick was terrified at that moment. He didn't know what would happen next. So he picked up a shotgun, sat on the balcony, and blew off half of his head. Gamble arrived just in time to witness the scene, but in the next second, a horrifying event occurred. The alien within Patrick not only quickly repaired his head but also completely took control of his body. Gamble, who witnessed the whole process, was shocked and immediately drove to the research facility to report everything he saw. But with Patrick now on the run, they were at a loss on how to proceed and could only wait for him to commit another act. However, Laura revealed a terrifying fact. Patrick might have already reproduced. The alien creatures grow so fast that in less than a fortnight they reach puberty, then pupa stage, and finally fully formed. Clearly, if these alien creatures were allowed to develop unchecked, the entire Earth would be in danger. Patrick, now fully controlled by the alien, had gone completely mad. His only goal was to continuously find women to reproduce with. The first to suffer are the street girls. But every time Press and his team received a report and arrived, Patrick had already completed his mission and disappeared. In just two days, the warehouse was filled with dozens of children. When everyone was at their wit's end, Laura thought of Eve's telepathic ability to sense her own kind. Unexpectedly, this time Eve chose to help voluntarily, because most of the alien genes in her body had entered a dormant state. They needed to use a special device to awaken them, so Eve could accurately sense the location of her kind. As three beams of light were directed at Eve's forehead, the alien within her began to emerge faintly. Soon, Eve clearly saw Patrick's location. He was driving around the streets looking for targets. After locking down the specific location through street signs, Press and Gamble immediately drove there. They had just tracked him to a supermarket when they heard screams. Patrick had forcibly taken a girl. They quickly followed the sound. But Patrick noticed them. He swiftly went to the parking lot, took the girl into a black business car. The two men, seeing the shaking business car, concluded that the suspect must be inside. But when they forcefully opened the door, they found a young couple in love instead. Just then, Patrick sensed Eve. Unexpectedly, Eve deliberately exposed her location to guide Patrick to rescue her. Upon receiving the message, Patrick immediately stopped his rampage and appeared before Press and Gamble, as he wanted to use this opportunity to head to the research base where Eve was located. After all, the children born from pure alien genes would undoubtedly be superior to those before. As soon as Patrick was brought to the base, Eve, sensing Patrick's presence, became emotionally agitated, loudly demanding to be let out. Patrick suddenly attacked, knocking down the guards around him and desperately rushing towards Eve's laboratory. The guards could do nothing but watch helplessly as Patrick approached Eve. Despite the thick glass separating them, they already began to fantasize. Patrick threatened Laura to open the door, which Laura, of course, refused. Enraged, Patrick grabbed Laura, intending to harm her. But fortunately, Press arrived in time with poison gas and sprayed Patrick wildly. Although Laura was saved, Patrick escaped once again. Afterward, Gamble, through the glass, purposely tried to seduce Eve to test his charm, only to be spurned by her. This was because Gamble had a defect. He suffered from a rare form of hypochromic anemia, and the alien species did not wish to reproduce with unhealthy humans, which is why Gamble had not been parasitized before. Meanwhile, Patrick had returned to the farm, where most of his children had already formed cocoons. The dense cocoons clung tightly to the ceiling and would soon emerge fully grown. Eve, wanting to mate with Patrick, constantly sought ways to escape. Using her powerful alien genes, Eve smashed through the glass and escaped. With even thick steel doors unable to stop her. Fortunately, the base was heavily guarded, and the soldiers outside were ready. The moment Eve burst out, everyone opened fire directly at her.
but they did not expect that the Fae's self-healing ability is really perverse. And soon Letty full blood resurrected and escaped from under the eyes of the soldiers again, with bullets raining down. Eve instantly dove into a jeep and sped away. Press and his team followed in another jeep, through telepathy. Eve quickly found Patrick's hideout, and their meeting was very straightforward, heading straight to the point. Soon after, Press and his team also arrived. The wriggling cocoons looked extremely unappetizing, so they immediately began spraying poison gas to deal with the cocoons, preventing them from hatching. Gamble was accidentally entangled by a tentacle around his neck. But fortunately, Laura used poison gas to destroy the tentacle and save Gamble. After all the alien cocoons were destroyed, they found even Patrick in another warehouse, now fully transformed into aliens. But before they could open fire, Press and Gamble were successively knocked away by Patrick, who charged at them, just as Laura was about to be attacked. Eve, still possessing a hint of human consciousness, stepped in front of Patrick to stop him from harming Laura. Unexpectedly, Eve truly regained her senses and attacked Patrick behind her, but the damage was ineffective, and Eve was slapped away by Patrick with a backhand. Enraged, Patrick showed no mercy and decisively ended Eve. Then, Patrick stood up, preparing to attack Press next. Seeing this, Press quickly opened fire in retaliation, but the bullets hitting Patrick were like mere tickles, and even the poison gas specifically designed to combat aliens had no effect on him. In a moment of crisis, Gamble thought of using his own defect. Understanding immediately, Press decisively grabbed a pitchfork nearby, stabbing it into Gamble's thigh, then threw the bloodied pitchfork at Patrick, unexpectedly. This method was effective. Patrick screamed in agony and died shortly after. After the crisis was averted, Laura planned to take Eve's body back to the base, but what they didn't know was that the two aliens had already made it. On the way back to the base, Eve's belly suddenly swelled, indicating that a perfect alien creature was about to be born. 